All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, episode 24 of Beyond the Dark Portal by Aaron Rosenberg and Christy Golden. We'll do a bit more than one chapter in this one, because otherwise it would end up only being about three minutes long. Let's go. Nazul stood atop the roof of the Black Temple in the center of an inscribed circle. Above him, the sky flashed with green lightning as the conjunction of the Watcher, the Staff and the Tome reached its peak. The Orc Shaman could sense Dranor's ley lines. He could feel them in his fingers and toes. He could feel the entire world trembling in his grasp. This was why the Draenei had built their great temple here. This was why it was the only place Nazul could cast his spell. From here, he could literally tap into the entire planet for its power. And as we all know, draining power from the planet is always a brilliant idea and never has any bad consequences. Around Nazul were several Death Knights and a few Warlocks, aiding in the spell, whilst beyond them were a number of Shadow Moon Orcs, warriors, who were there for protection. And it's a good thing they were, because a short while ago, the Alliance forces had crashed against the Black Temple with full fury. It was only a matter of time before they breached it. But they'd be too late, as all thought. He then raised the Scepter of Sargeras with one hand, and the Eye of Dalaran with the other. Both started to glow, pulsing with strength, and Nazul then started to float, rising higher and higher. Now! With a single quick slashing gesture of the Scepter, the Shaman then tore through the curtains of the cosmos itself, and the world started to shake. Many of the other participants staggered and fell to their knees, but Nazul didn't give a shit. He could feel the power reaching across reality, the energies leaping forward, grasping at something, something solid. There, another world. And then, a rift was open. Success. And what's this? Not just one rift. Nazul could sense there were others opening as well. All across Dranor. Double success. He could send scouts through each one. They could conquer many worlds. Each clan could have its own and then no one would be able to stop the Horde. However, those thoughts and feelings of elation were soon interrupted when one of the Shadow Moon Orcs piped up. Bloody hell! What's silence? In that small moment of distraction, the Eye of Dalaran kind of twitched a little bit in Nizul's hand. He frowned and clutched it harder, but it seemed to be writhing like a fish. And before Nizul could process what was happening, the artifact then leapt from his palm, flew through the air, and came to rest in the hand of a wrinkly old human wizard. Behind the angry-looking wizard bloke was another human, full armor and glowing a blinding white light, and beside him, an elven female, with a face full of stink eye and an arrow knocked and aimed directly towards Nazul. How dare they, he thought. How dare they interrupt my moment of glory. The eye will not serve you when you are dust. Completely outraged, Nazul raised his hands, and the ground beneath the alliance intruders cracked, with jagged bits popping up and hurling themselves towards the interlopers. And although they managed to duck and weave and avoid most of that, Gale Force Wind then snatched them up, causing them to hover hopelessly in the air for a bit. Nazul took great pleasure in watching them bob up and down, looking really annoyed. However, time was of the essence and all that. Through the rift! Now! Glory and fresh worlds await us! However, the Shadow Moon Orc from before then piped up again. We should kill these Alliance scum and then gather the rest of the Horde! We can't just leave them! What of our brothers? Grom and the Warsong are still on Azeroth! There are females and children still scattered all over! We cannot abandon them! To do so would be the most cowardly cutlass. Something then snapped in Nazul, as one of his own clan lectured him. And it was in that moment that he realized that his guilt, his shame, his need to do good for his people, was all just holding him back. Without those things, he could finally be free. So he went ahead and just palpatine lightning to the poor sod. Didn't even give the guy any kind of retort, just fried him to ash. Nazul then turned to the rest of the orcs, who stared in shock and disbelief. The rest of the horde is lost. They've served their purpose. I am the Horde, and I will survive. Choose me, or choose death. Those weren't exactly fantastic options, but the Orcs nodded and rushed towards the rift, and Nazul went ahead and rushed through it too, with the damn thing vanishing as soon as he'd stepped through it. But now that he was gone, the pesky wind holding Turalyon, Khadgar, and Illyria dissipated as well. We're too late. But you've got the Eye of Dalaran back. That's got to count for something. I don't know. I don't know the spell he was using. I don't know how to find whatever world that rift took him to. Even if I could open a portal, we have no idea of the destination. Kagar looked utterly defeated, but he then noticed the inscribed circle on the temple roof and started muttering to himself. What is it? Power. More power than I've ever felt in any one place save Medivh's tower. So that's why. What? I'd wondered why Nazul abandoned Hellfire Citadel instead of just casting his spell there. But he couldn't. He needed the magic here to fuel it. Does that help us any? I'm not sure. Perhaps. Kadgar then entered the circle and immediately regretted it and started screaming like a maniac. Such power! 
It poured through him like wildfire, sending every sense into overload. Nazul was a shaman, not a mage. His magics came from the elements, from the world itself. For Nazul, standing in this circle would have been like tapping into something he already had quite a bit of experience with. But for Khadgar, it was an entirely new experience. One he'd built absolutely no tolerance for whatsoever. But he hadn't earned his Archmage title for nothing. He was a master of magic. And whilst this shit was new, it was still magic. He could bloody handle it. So he reined in his senses, took some deep breaths or something, concentrated really hard, and then boosh. With a clear head and a full grasp of the situation, he could now analyse what the hell all this power was trying to tell him. Oh no. What? The rifts. Nazul didn't just open one. He opened many. Too many. All over this poor world. The scope of this. I don't think Dranel can bear it. It can't hold it. Both Duralian and Illyria looked at each other, and then back to Khadgar. What do we do? And how long do we have? But before Khadgar could answer, the world answered for him. The temple itself started to shudder. The volcano nearby roared and ejaculated. Many of the mountains around Shadow Moon Valley trembled, with huge sections cracking loose and tumbling down. It was absolute chaos. And if that wasn't bad enough, a sudden realization then hit Khadgar, making him feel even more depressed about the entire situation. Azeroth, it's in danger. We have to get back to the portal now. Do you have what you need to close it? I have the skull. The book must be here somewhere. I'll find it. Duralian nodded. All right, I'll rally the troops. There's no time. Khadgar then grabbed Turalian's shoulders. Don't you understand? I'm sorry, Turalian, truly. But if I can't shut down the portal right away, Draenor will take Azeroth down with it. Khadgar watched as the realization dawned within Turalian's eyes and felt an absolute gut punch at the grim resignation that followed it. We'll take the Griffins. That's the fastest way back. But I will speak to the troops before we go. They deserve that at least.